Hi, I'm Dr. David Adley. In this video, I'll be using the Planetary Orbit Simulator from Nap Labs to explore Kepler's laws and what they tell us about how planets orbit the Sun. Let's get started. I'll begin by pulling up Nap Labs and going to the Planetary Orbits section and opening the Planetary Orbit Simulator. Okay, the simulator's open and we're set for the default settings. First, let's look a little bit about what it means for a planet to follow an elliptical orbit. That's Kepler's first law. What you see in the display here, that's an ellipse. It's a stretched out circle. I can stretch it more or less or even have it be perfectly circular. And when I change the amount of stretching, we call that the orbit's eccentricity. Right now, this orbit is perfectly circular. But if you imagine taking this circle and stretching it out, as I do when I increase the eccentricity, rather than having a single center that defines the edge of the circle, instead the ellipse is going to have two foci. And the distance between the foci determines the shape of the ellipse that gets created. Let's turn on the marker for the empty focus, which currently overlaps the Sun. Because this is a perfectly circular orbit, both the Sun and the empty focus are coincident. But as I start to stretch this orbit, you'll see that they separate. The Sun always remains at one focus, and then there's that other empty focus that's defined by the mathematics of the orbit, but which physically isn't meaningful. That's what it means for a planet to, to, to follow an elliptical orbit. Here's the Sun at one focus, and you'll notice it's off-center along the long direction of the ellipse. And then there's that other empty focus, which doesn't really mean much, except it's needed to make the math work. In addition to the focus, an ellipse also has two independent axes, whereas a circle has just a single radius, the ellipse has a short axis in the vertical direction and a long axis in the horizontal direction. And we call half of the long axis the semi-major axis. The semi-major axis is very important in understanding a planet's orbit. For one thing, it tells us the average distance between the planet and the sun. The semi-major axis is also going to be important later when you learn about Kepler's third law. Okay, you might notice that I look a little different than I did before. Um, the previous video cut out about halfway through right before I was supposed to start Kepler's second law, so I've had to re-record it. From here on, you're going to get the second iteration of the Kepler's second law demonstration. Hopefully it will be just as good as the first one. Okay, so we finished talking about what it means that a planet travels along an elliptical orbit. Kepler's second law is going to describe how a planet behaves as it traverses that orbit. And what it says is that a planet is going to sweep out equal areas in equal times. Take a look at this graphic from OpenStax Astronomy, which is an excellent open education resource textbook that illustrates what Kepler's second law says. So if you look at the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see that a planet is going to be sweeping out a narrow area, whereas on the right-hand side of your screen, when the planet is closer to the sun, the planet is going to be sweeping out a wider area. But each of those slices has equal area has equal geometric area. And therefore, the time from number one to number two has to be the same as the time from number three to number four. What does that tell you about the speed of the planet when it's close to the sun compared to the speed of the planet when it's far from the sun? Go ahead, pause the video for a second, think through this, come up with an answer. Okay. Did you get an answer? 
What did you say? If you said that the planet is going to travel faster when it's close to the sun and slower when it's far from the sun, that's correct. Let's look at that in the NAPLABS simulator. So I'll turn on my sweep continuously feature so that when the planet starts moving, it's going to just keep sweeping out areas all the way around its orbit. Each one of these slices that the planet is defining has equal geometric area. But this one over here, this green one, that fat slice has a much longer distance along the edge than this green slice over here, which is much thinner. So that distance there is shorter and therefore the planet is traveling more slowly on this side of its orbit when it's far from the sun compared to over here when it's close to the sun. And if I crank the eccentricity all the way up to maximum, you can really see that effect. You can see the planet dramatically speed up when it gets over here close to the sun, like that, and then dramatically slow down over here. And I hope to talk to you again soon for another demonstration. Bye for now.